Greetings gamers and welcome back to Tales from Tetheria, our D&D adventure. With us today, we have Mari Takahashi playing Kaizen Voldra. Does your voice get tiring? Because this is just the beginning and I'm already tired for your voice. Yes, it hurts a lot. I, I hate doing it, but I do. <laughs> to stay in character. Tell us a bit about <laughs> tell us a bit about Kaizen. Yes, tis I, Kaizen Voldra from the Milfwood Forest, of course. I'm a wood elf, I'm a monk, and now I'm level three! Yay! Nice! That's awesome. Also joining us, Noah Grossman, playing Deborah. Hey, quick editor's note. I bet you wonder why Dragon Ball Z was behind Noah. That's because Noah shoots his camera footage in front of a green screen and then just sends it to me like that without replacing the green screen with anything. So I can replace it with anything I want. And for that particular shot, I chose Dragon Ball. Will it stay Dragon Ball? No, probably not. I'll probably do some other stuff, but uh, that's why that's happening. Okay, back into the video. How's it going, Deborah? Dude, it's going great. And uh, you should use my full traditional name. It's Deborah Mustard. I'm right. sorry, Deborah Mustard. Deborah Mustard. Yeah, I'd, uh, as well, I'm level three now. Congratulations to me. Yes, no, yeah. congratulations. Well done. Yes, we leveled uh, up after our last campaign. Yeah, I hope you get to level three. I think you did, right? And also get those polyps checked out, man. They're sounding worse. Yeah, yeah, right? they're not good. That's what happens. <laughs> that I, a little gravelly. In one year, I I won't be able to talk. <laughs> <laughs> and you remember Krulax? Krulax is my dwarf fighter who loves axes, and he loves getting into the action. Ah. <laughs> That is a, hey, yeah, it. it's getting old. It's getting old. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but uh, and in our last adventure, we formed a little bounty hunting group. There was one more person with us, and it was Falamir. But he's a cowardly thief, and he ran off with our money. Boo. And uh, we have, and now yeah, I'm with Falamir. I'm gonna right. yeah, boo. I'm gonna introduce our dungeon master, Ruben, Ruben Bressler. Uh, who's here who will catch us up on the story a little bit more about what's going on and what we're gonna do about this situation I hope it has That's... a bloody horrific ending one can only hope that it would have a bloody and horrific <laughs> ending but that's more up to you than it is up to me. Oh, then uh, it definitely I, will. I don't know if you want when it. When we good. find yeah, this son of a bitch. <laughs> I, I look forward I look forward to your letters. Hi, everybody. I'm the Internet's Ruben Bressler. We do join our adventure. Uh, you are already adventuring. You're already in mm. progress. Uh, sort of on the trail. Not really on the trail, but you've heard tell that Falomer may have headed towards a location called The Bog. And you've made your location, you've made uh, your way into the bog, which sits on the border of the nations of uh, Reglus and Pilgar, uh, <laughs> just to the east. Man, who is it, naming that area the bog? <laughs> Real well, inventive. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I suppose because. Spoiler alert, border, it was me. I made the map. <laughs> yeah. I, I suppose be it because it's on the border between yeah, Reglus and it's Pilgar. It's a bit of a Pilgar, no man's land. Right. Pilgar calls it the Pilgar Bog, and Reglus calls it the Reglus Bog. Ah, yes. But no one can agree on a name. It's kind of messy like that. You know, this is sort of like a, a bog that, even though there's a bunch of, you know, fens and loam, there's also just skeletons, right? There's just rusted armor kind of all over the place um, because, you know, generations of wars and battles have taken place um, and it's it's not a great place to have a battle but they happen here so this is where you followed your trail and unfortunately the trail's gone a little bit cold here in the bog and you've made camp and you're uh, settled down for the evening I swear to God, when we find this son of a bitch, this son of a bitch Falomir, I will rip him limb from limb. Uh, but but I I, uh, I actually can't track him any farther. I don't see any like hoof prints or anything. I'm looking at the map here. Uh, it just says bog where we are. I mean, there's there's Pilgar down south, and we just came from Reglus, but it just says bog on the map. I don't know what to do with that, guys. I don't know what's our what's our next move. We, well, first we should be a little bit more specific. I look around, I see dead skeletons. I see armor rusting. Right? The battles were here. Mm -hmm. Battle bog. But I look Ooh. around and it's scary. It's spooky. Spooky battle bog. Mm, I I'm right, uh, you know what, Deborah? I'm writing that into the map. 
This place is now, now Spooky Battle Bog. We've named it. I Let's have distribute made that map back at Yeah. Time. I have I have also made a note. <laughs> spooky Battle Bog. Spooky Battle Bog. Spooky, spooky Battle Bog. Kaizen, what do your elf eyes see? Any traces of Falamir? No traces of Falamir, uh, but I'd like to scrounge around this all the armor to see if there's anything that that we can uh, scavenge and steal for. Sure. Uh, go ahead and make a perception check for me. Oh, guys, I have a plus five perception. So this is looking this is looking pretty good here. I I like those odds. Uh, it's a ten plus five, so fifteen. Okay, not bad. Um. You know, most of the leather armor is crackly and, you know, decayed. Um, the furs are moldy and gross. And even the metal armor has begun to oxidize a little bit. But you do, you are able to find uh, a nice pair of, like, fur bracers. Mm. Um, they don't look like, like, the fur is pretty decayed. Bracers the with bracer, the fur. The whole club right. was lo- <laughs> <laughs> Looking at her. <laughs> Amazing. Hopefully we have the rights to that. Um, I don't care. I don't. I don't. But, Copyright uh, strike me, I dare you. <laughs> if you get demonetized for that, I would be so proud of you. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> um, and as you look at those bracers, uh, they they look like they're non-magical, but there is a, um, a what looks like a blade hidden in one of the bracers that looks like it, it has a trigger point, um, sort of like that Assassin's Creed weapon, oh, where you can, yeah. like, flick your wrist and the blade comes out. Yes. Oh, snap, hidden you found blade. a hidden blade? I found a hidden blade. That's nuts. <laughs> so there you That's go. That's so dope. Um, with your 15 perception as well, you do sense, as you're looking through these remains, there appears to be a light... Um, it is getting towards dusk at this point. There appears to be what looks like a lantern light, uh, vaguely swaying, um, uh, about 50 feet away and may, and very slowly making its way towards your camp. Ooh, with my elf eyes, I see some light. It could be that mother milfer. <laughs> Freaking... <laughs> Freaking, it could be him. I say we go towards it. Wait, wait, they're, but they're coming this way? Yeah, maybe right maybe we here. should wait and ambush him. Mm. Let's get an ambush position. Yeah. I'll, I'll use my familiar. I'll make a rat and I'll throw it hard really, to, you know, like 30 feet out. I'll toss it and then it'll scurry up and see who it is. Okay, uh, but, don't, all right. but, but don't freak it out, though, you know? Yeah, don't yeah, we want to keep the element of surprise. Make sure you're familiar it sticks to the undergrowth. Right. Oh, I just okay. want a life a very so tiny badly. Rat. Yeah, the very tiniest, small. the tiniest, cutest rat. Uh, that you, by the way, you can warg into this rat. That's, how That's exactly oh. what I'm going to do, Ruben. You I'm can gonna warg! I'm going to throw that shit like a football, and I'm going to warg it. And then I'm going to scurry up, and I want to see who's there. Fabulous. Uh, go ahead and, um, let's see here. You threw the rat. Well, it's a mm-hmm. bog. It's pretty soft. This is like rat territory. Go ahead and make a stealth check <laughs> with your rat stats for me. Uh, um, rat stats. <laughs> are those just going to be my stats? Hashtag, Hashtag rat, stats. rat stats. Hashtag rat stat. I rolled a 14 and then plus three. Mm. Nice. Your rat is stealthy through the underbrush ducking and diving underneath roots, approaching the shape, and uh, you find a nice stump that you can peek out from behind, and it appears as if there's a kindly old woman, uh, maybe like three and a half feet tall, um, walking with a staff twice her size, um, gnarled uh, hook on the end of this staff, and curved, and in the curve is a oil lantern, and that is the lantern, uh, the light that appears to be ambling its way towards you. Okay, everyone, listen up. I see this old woman. She's about three foot five, and she's got this big stick. It's like a seven foot stick, and on that stick is the lantern, right? It's curled up. This is what I'm thinking. Like, maybe it's an old woman, but that's a big stick for an old woman to be walking with, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, that's right? definitely like a, it, she's wearing a skin. So I think that we should hide and one of us should pop out to talk 
to this possible bog witch. This could be a spooky uh, bog, bog witch. What are you scared of some grandma now? You guys can hide. I'll talk to this this kindly old grandma. You wanna you wanna talk to the grandma? You want to talk to the grandma? Okay. Yeah, is it a, is it a gill? Oh, okay. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll talk to the grandma. Look, this is very simple. You guys hide. It's fine. We won't won't spook her with too many on the road. I think you're right. And I'll speak to this uh, this grandma. Ask her if she's seen Falomir. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. Describe what Falomir looks like too. Don't forget. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. a grungy dude a with name. the. Terrible mustache. Just like sucks. Just a bad really accent. bad black mustache. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> accent that keeps switching. Yeah, she'll know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure to describe him. Kind of smells right. Kind of had a, an Let's odor. Hide. Oh, yeah. Hi, hi, hi. Dive into so, the boat. Yeah. I need stealth checks from uh, Kaizen and Deborah. I rolled a five, five plus three on my stealth check. Okay. I got an eight. I got a five plus seven. This kindly old lady uh, ambles her way, sort of whistling to herself, humming kindly. Um, she kind of looks like Strega Nona from those children's books. Nope, don't know who that um, is. <laughs> that's, this Beef was a great, enough. This was a great <laughs> reference for like four of you. Beef and like uh, she walks into the clearing where enough. you were probably about to, you know, set up camp, and she says, "Oh, hi there, Sunny boy." Welcome to the bog. How are you? I'm fine, ma'am. Uh, you know, it's it's late at night. Uh, it's kind of surprised to see you. Uh, but actually, uh, it, it is nice to see you. And I hate to cut straight to business, uh, but we're actually, uh, er, I, uh, well, uh, I mean me, I actually, uh, by myself, <laughs> am looking for uh, a man named Falomir. About yay tall. He's a man. He's got a really ugly black mustache. It's got It's got crumbs in it. Smells a little bit raggedy, green cloak. Uh, have you have you possibly seen him? He's a criminal and a thief, actually, uh, but accent. passes himself off as a bounty hunter. The accent, tell, ask about the All right, and his accent keeps switching. <laughs> Sorry. Well, well uh, lone adventurer, I don't know off the top of my head if anyone I've seen recently fits that description. I, I'm very sorry. Um, I will be sure money. to keep I will be sure to keep um, be, be sure to keep an eye out. I, th I think that the stump over there might also have a question. Um, do you want to? Oh, go sure, talk yeah. To the stump? Th that's weird. Who thought? Oh, spirit of the stump. Did did you have a question for this lady? Spirit of the stump. Oh, I am the spirit of the stump of the spooky battle bog. Oh, An old Christ. woman wench. Would Ooh, you tell us wench. if you've seen? <laughs> said Falomir for two gold? Gold are like the coins things, right? Like the little metal discs. I don't need those. Um, but thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I, I, I wish I could help you. I would if I could, but I don't think I have seen this person with the terrible mustache. Although, I do like the name Spooky Battlebog. Right, it's a great name. That's a right, great they name. should have named it that. Previously, I was I was called the Wandering Witch of the Boglands. Yeah, Boglands is a terrible name. No, I like Spooky the Battle Witch Bog. Of the Spooky Battle Bog, a lot better. That's great. Right, clearly better name. Yeah. Yes. We, I mean, we're gonna speak to the map makers, the cartographers. We're gonna get it going. It's gonna be Spooky Battle Bog. It's just a matter okay. of time. We just gotta get everyone on board. Uh, thank you for trying I would to help like us. To stealthily. Uh, intimidate. What? what? Stealthily intimidate. Mm -hmm. What do you... Mm -hmm. Describe for me how you're going to stealthily God, intimidate. <laughs> Just like getting the vibes, man. Yeah, I, I would like to appear <laughs> behind of this three foot five old lady and um, just stand behind and cast a shadow over her. Fabulous. Just, Go ahead and roll intimidation for me. Oh, thank oh. goodness. Okay, I rolled a 16 and I have negative one intimidation. <laughs> excellent, excellent. So excellent. it's a 15 so, still. From out of the shadows, like a vampire, Kaizen appears from behind a tree and is directly behind this old woman um, who seems relatively nonplussed uh, sort of glances over her shoulder at you, but keeps talking to, uh, keeps talking to Krulax. A little bit surprised. I wouldn't say spooked, uh, but, uh, 
certainly you, you got the jump on her mm. for sure. So uh, it sucks that you haven't seen Falamir. I don't know if you know this, but we're bounty hunters. Do you have anyone you want like taken out oh. for a monetary price? Because we do well, that. Well, funny you should mention that. Ooh. Because um, as as I I did mention, um, I I am the wandering witch. Right. Of, we, we're gonna call it the Spooky Battle Bog. Mm. Uh, my name's Esmeralda, by the way. What's your name? Krulax, with two X's. Krulax? Yeah, Krulax with two axes X's. are my thing. Yeah, it's kind very, of my thing. I, th I throw axes. I hit people with axes. Uh, yeah. Very nice. I like that. Uh, this what is, is the, my the stump and the shadow. What are their names? Right. You guys can stop hiding now. I think she knows you're there. Uh, behind you, uh, that's Kaizen Voldra. And uh, the stump uh, is is actually our gnome friend. Uh, that's Deborah. Hey, you guys can go. like wave or something. <laughs> I'm still here I, trying to intimidate. Witch. And you're also extremely reckless and weird, which is exactly what uh, uh, what I look for in <laughs> adventures. Which is great. It's excellent. Uh, and you're asking to provide a service in exchange for material wealth, which is how commerce works, right? That's great. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Wonderful. Yes. Well, um. Yeah, indeed. I have a job for you to do. Oh, that cool. Is the case. Yes. Uh, as adventurers, you have experience uh, uh, with with dungeons uh, and with dragons. Yes. We. Mm. Wait, yes. A little I'm bit. I'm trying to remember. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We killed that one dragon in the cave. Yeah. We yes. dragon up. I mean, we messed the dragon up real bad. <laughs> Green dragon. Good. Yeah. One of the that's poison cool. breathy ones too. Ooh. That's and excellent. there is money involved. We love capitalism. Yeah. Yes, there will be there will be money involved. Um, right, big however, fan. I don't know how much. Do you want? You want coins? Is that? Yeah. Is that what the kids? Yeah, the golden the ones. As many days? of the golden yeah. coins as you have, will I, or, or are offering. <clears throat> yes. I can. I mean, I can do that. That's great. How many do you want? Uh oh. Um, uh, well, let me tell you the job first, and then I'll tell oh, you. Oh, okay. Then, then yeah. Right, we'll, and then, then we'll we'll, we'll price yeah. it out. That's probably how this yes. works. Well, this is normal standard adventurer stuff, Dungeons and Dragons. This is no different. This is a mission that requires you to enter a dragon and defeat a dungeon. Now, enter a dragon? You, yes, that's how that's done. Yes. In, and and enter a dungeon. And defeat a dungeon. Uh, question. Right. Uh, Krulax, yes. uh, my, my thing's axis. Uh, wouldn't entering a dragon cause you to die? Uh, no, not necessarily. I mean, I mean, not this dragon. Okay. You see, this is the dragon. Um, so uh, I'll give you some some backstory here. Uh, basically, there's a place deep in the bog um, that, unfortunately, uh, even though I am from here, I cannot get to. Mm -hmm. Um, because the only way to get to it is to become lost. Mm. And I I cannot become lost in the bog. Because you know Spooky bo Battle Bog way too well. Because yeah. I know Spooky Battle Bog like the back of my, my hand. It's it's mm. way too, I, way, I know it way too well and therefore I cannot find the place that I need to get to. It's a it's long and complicated. Uh, but it um, it is a place uh, called the Prized Halls of Argentis. Hmm. Long ago, there was an ancient silver dragon named Argentus the Patient. Uh, and, and they perished ages, ages before, even before my time. But the spirit of the dragon became bound to the land and the, 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 um, their horde that they called home. And they've sort of become the place in and of themselves. They are now the prized halls of Argentus. Argentus themselves is good and kind and virtuous, but they also love trophies, and unfortunately one of their trophies has something that belongs to me. Um, the prized halls have a bunch of things, great things, and some not-so-great things, as well as many great and not-so-great beings who've run afoul of Argentus, maybe trying to steal something from the spirit dragon. Mm. One such being is a mimic known to me as Chester. Chester! So you're saying Chester the Mimic stole a trophy that means a lot to you. Yes, and I need it back. And what Chester's you... trapped inside this, this dragon hall. Chester is inside of the dragon, yes. 
What was this trophy that you want that 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 you had for? Why does it mean so much to you? Well, I will tell you what it looks like. Okay? Anything personal that's a bit we don't know each other that well, but I know what it's in. And if you can return to me that box, then we have a deal. Hmm. We well, if we get it for you, you'll tell us why it means something to you. Oh, no. If you return it to me, I'll pay you handsomely. Which and we haven't talked about yet. The box itself is made of uh, black wood. Uh, dark as the night, about four arms length long. About half as much uh, deep. And another half as much tall. That is, that is what I need. How Chester, much does it weigh? I would say, oh... Maybe, maybe a stone or two? Hmm. What's inside of it? Why are you so curious about what's inside of it? I just want the box back. Don't you just want paid? Well, yeah, we're, we're bounty hunters. We normally, like, kill someone or capture them at least. We don't- oh, if we you don't... want to kill Chester, you feel free. Oh, okay. You go right ahead. Oh, okay. Kill and, Chester uh, and bring if, back you know, the box. If any, if any random goblins or gangsters get in your way, you can also- Mess with them, I suppose. Uh, That'd be a fun uh, spin-off game, care. Goblins and Gangsters. Ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> would it mean anything to you if you if we brought Chester back to you alive? That would be quite a thing if you could do that. <laughs> I would love that, actually. I don't think that's possible, but I am willing to be surprised. We love um, a challenge. We do. And we also like insurance. Do you sell any insurance? Oh, adventure insurance, yeah. <laughs> oh, adventurer's insurance. If you, yes, I have a, and, he'll, and she'll pull out like a form. All right. A W9. <laughs> if you, if you, uh, so this form basically states that if you procure the object, but uh, it is uh, lost or stolen on the way back, um, but you can still scry upon it, or it is still on this plane of existence that I can find it, even if it's outside of the uh, the prize halls of Argentis, makes it easier for me to find. Uh, here, for and forthwith, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, just sign here. Uh huh. Yes, there certainly are a lot of yes, 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 words yes. on this page, and I can read all of them. As we know, I am a very <laughs> good reader. Um, but uh, uh, allow me one moment to confer with my associates. All right, all right what do you what do you guys think of this? Um, uh, what's a lot. Uh, is 500 a lot? No, 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 no. We up, we start, we start high. This is a bog witch. Yeah. Oh, okay. She didn't give us a number. You know, I'm like 10,000. 10,000? 10, yeah. 20,000. 20,000. 20,000. Well, because think about this. We got to sign a, a, an NDA on top of this insurance because we're not supposed to look mm, inside the box, nidda. right? Right, the nidda. Yes, mm, the nidda. The nidda, and, yeah. And, you know, maybe there's a bonus if we bring Chester back. And she's right. a witch. So, what, why don't anywhere. we say 10,000 to start for the box, plus another 10 if we can bring Chester back alive, 20,000 total. Yeah, I don't know the value of gold in this in, in, in any yeah, what's... society here. I live alone, but that sounds like a lot. Yeah, I've never See, had sounds like a, much, more, sounds like a much more than like five or 10, until we started bounty hunting. Really? Yeah, but anyway, yeah, 10,000 and 20,000 stacks good. Look, we highball her. If she comes back with a lower offer, we'll still take it. Yeah, I mean, money's money, it. yeah. But we might as well start hard. Maybe she's rich. Maybe she doesn't know how much money's worth. She didn't seem to be very familiar with gold coins. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we got highball it. All right, good plan, guys. So we uh, we unhuddle up and uh, approach as her. As you turn back around, Esmeralda is petting the rat. Oh, okay. Did you name? cute. Did you name cute the rat? Baby. Yeah. Yeah. What's its name there, Deborah? Oh, uh, that's uh. Missy Mustard. <laughs> Missy Mustard. Missy. Little Missy Mustard. Hey, Missy Mustard. Missy Mustard, uh, come back. Don't don't disturb our new friend. Oh, what a Dep cutie. What a wonderful little familiar you have. This is just a delight. He sure is. Uh, listen, Esmeralda, <laughs> we, we talked about it. And, uh, you know, mimics and other ethereal planes. This is a, this is a lot of, you know, high-level stuff here you're talking about. And uh, our average rate for this type of thing, uh, bringing back a box like this, it's gonna be 10,000. It's an extra 10,000 if we can bring the mimic back alive. So 20,000 if we if we can if we can get you both. 10,000 for the box. Uh, is, is this acceptable? Would you like to haggle 
or would you, or do you not want to haggle? I mean, no, we just like the money. No, no, no haggle. Some people like to haggle. You know, I like to make people feel. Ten thousand's fine. Whoa! Oh, <laughs> she said yes. She like, God she damn, like wave This lady's her hand. loaded. <laughs> she like wave her hand and another form. This one on like old scroll paper mm -hmm. appears next to her, and she snatches it out of the air. And a, a quill pen uh, comes out of like one of her sleeves, or maybe also out of thin air. And she will say, "All right, this is the agreement." Um, that, uh, that says that you'll procure the thing for me, as well as all of the other agreements that we've discussed in this here conversation. Mm -hmm. And I would, I would love to sign this, because I write very well, but I'm gonna pass the pen over to, uh, to my good friend Kaizen. Can I do a, either, can I do an insight check? Sure. What would you like to do an insight check on? Um, I, I would like to, um, do a check on the validity of this of this contract and to make sure that it's not gonna fuck us. Absolutely. Go ahead and make an insight check for me. 16 plus five. Ooh. 21, nice. You take a look at this contract and it uh, is interesting in that not only does it have the, the uh, standard stipulations for hunting bounties and for prize gathering, it also has every word spoken during this conversation written down in text on the page. Hmm. Including petting Deborah Mustard's rat? Missy Mustard. Yes, including, oh, what a lovely rat, what's its name? Missy, come back from don't bother our new friend. All of this <laughs> is in quotes and quoted correctly. <laughs> it's like the office. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, well, in that case, I, I think that this is good to sign. Uh, everything that we talked about is on this uh, paper. So you know, um, can, we, can I add one thing real quick before we sign? Okay. Yeah, don't like take our souls or anything. I oh, don't. that's good. No souls taking yeah, clause. Yeah, just, just like no stole, no, no soul stealing, no eyeball taking, uh, you know, no finger chopping. Uh, and yeah, that's about it, I think. Okay, mm -hmm. I will, let me add that real quick and she will take the quill pen and add in like scraggly old woman handwriting, no eyeball taking, no soul stealing, no finger taking. Yeah, this, this isn't our first rodeo. We know, we know what's going on, none of that. <laughs> oh, I can tell. Very experienced adventurers, you lot. Yes. Okay. Well, um, I, I w thank you so much. I've been looking for some adventurers. Uh, unfortunately, most of the adventurers that make their way into the bog, well, they don't come back out. So this that's is, spooky uh, battle bog very, for you. That's yeah. spooky <laughs> battle bog, if I've ever heard of it. Good thing Put we're going inside of a dragon instead of hanging out in the bog. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. A as I mentioned, you do have to go get lost. I don't mean that rudely. I mean, you have to physically and mentally be lost uh, to find the village, uh, which the village uh, of Paradox is where mm. the entrance to the prize hall is located. Uh, if you start walking towards the headwaters of the Setos River, uh, you'll probably end up somewhere nearby. But again, I know the whole place like the back of my hand. Mm. Um, but you know. won't take long. Yeah. We, anyway, we get lost all the time. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Good luck. We, we don't, we're not even 100% sure where we are right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> I couldn't have asked for a better group of adventurers. Yeah. Goodbye. Bye. And as she turns, the uh, it's as if the her back is the forest, and she mm. she becomes completely disappeared. Oh, that was good a, camo. Yeah, that's a sick, yeah, oh, sick camo. Really good camo. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, I guess we just wander around for a while in this place to turn up yeah yeah yeah, yeah i'm i'm lost now yeah i don't know <laughs> let's go forward i, I just I know north <laughs> north i just realized i've been holding this map upside down like the entire time so, <laughs> so what oh I'm that's a good ask, idea let's do that <laughs> what i'm gonna ask for you is for you to roll survival for me mm -hmm. you want a low number i got a three plus one Ooh, pretty low. I got a nine. I too got a plus. nine plus three for me. I got, oh, I do have a plus one in survival. Yeah, I have a 10 total. Okay. You're pretty good at getting lost. 
Um, you wander around for uh, for a while, um, not really knowing exactly what to do. For for a little bit, you are searching for the Setos River, um, because that's what Esmeralda told you to do. But Deborah, Deborah doesn't look for anything. Deborah just just goes. Um, Sounds about right. Deborah, tell me what you do when you are just kind of meandering, not worried about being lost. Uh, I just look generally up, so I, <laughs> I, I tilt my head just at an angle where I can't see the floor or my feet. I just kind of looking up, and then I just kind of walk, and I just kind of tilt my head a little bit. That's about it. I just kind of walk, and I whistle, and I, and I go, boop, 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 boop. And it takes it takes a little while, um, probably uh, a couple of hours before you uh, are. While you're looking up, you see the stars and the moon, and uh, it doesn't feel like you've been walking all night. But suddenly, you see that there's a little bit of that pre-dawn light peeking around some clouds, peeking from behind the trees, and you accidentally kick. Uh, what you think is a rock, but turns out is a brick. And there is a cobblestone pathway that leads into a very quaint, small village with little houses. Um, and there is a welcome sign that says, Welcome to Paradox. Oh! Yo, yo, everyone! Yo, Kaizen! Uh, Krulax! Yeah, yeah, yo, yeah. Come, come to my voice! Come to my voice! Yep, I'm coming. coming to your voice! I'm, I'm playing yeah, with my it. new hidden blade! What? <laughs> oh, I, I yeah. found, we're there! Dude, we're already around. here? We I are... feel like it's been like two minutes! Guys, we are great at getting lost! We are fantastic <laughs> at I mean, it! We, I, I mean, think... this should be our job! I know! Dude, we're killing it at this bounty hunter thing. I feel like we, we did really well in it. negotiations, and uh -huh. now we're already yeah, at the place yeah. we wanted to be. We're good at this! In yeah, fact, we are just if anything, W's. That, stacked up. If anything, that Falamir bitch was dead weight, dude. We're much, <laughs> we're much more efficient without him. That mustache yeah. was dead weight. <laughs> <laughs> that mustache. I thought it was a dead animal on his face. Kaizen, what's your passive wisdom score? Passive wisdom. Uh, Which would be ten plus your wisdom modifier. Fifteen. Fifteen. Um, it does only feel like it's been a couple of minutes, and yet. You were making camp when the sun was going down, and you're looking at Parad Paradox, and the sun is rising from behind the clouds. Mm. It doesn't The timing doesn't match. The time does not match up here. Guys, what? I went to elf school for about 29 years, uh, and, and this is telling me that the time is off here. The sun should have been going down, but it's coming up. I, I feel like one minute feels like seven days. Para, paradox, paradox, Parad opposite, docs. things that don't match. Doc, and they probably have two docs. Yes, a pair of docs. Parts, right, and that's making things be opposite, or something. <laughs> yes. As a rooster crows from standing on a white picket fence post. You see some of the doors of some of the quaint houses open up. Yeah. And approaching you SMP. is uh, is a woman <laughs> who is just as wide as she is tall. Um, uh, looks How like a dwarf. How wide and tall? Probably five feet. Whoa! A five foot square? Five foot, she probably is like a, f yeah, a little bit under five feet in orb shape. Mm. Um, she is a dwarven woman. Uh, mm -hmm. And she walks up to you and she says, oh, hey, y'all, welcome to Paradox. Hey, <laughs> my dwarven kin, how are you? I, I'm doing just peachy keen. How about yourself, honey? Uh, doing great. Not familiar with that accent. What uh, dwarven region are you from? <laughs> oh, I'm from I'm, I'm from uh, a little place down south. You don't have to. Oh, all right. Too much. Uh, yeah, well, so I'm, I'm Krulax. What's your name? <laughs> it's very nice to meet you. My name is Glenda Glassbottle. Glenda Glassbottom. Glenda Glassbottom. Well, listen, Glenda, uh, my friends and I here are uh, on a bit of a, a mission, and we're looking for uh, the prized halls of Argentis. Oh, you're looking for the prized halls. Well, mm. we'll take you right to them over to Argy. 
Uh, RG. Oh. Orgy? RG. RG. <laughs> RG. His full name is Orgy. Argentus, but we call him RG around here. RG. RG. So there's there's no sex party, right? Just to clarify. Oh, I mean only if you only if you're looking for one. No, no, no. <laughs> well, wink at you. Maybe we got the time. Yeah. Uh, well, no. I think we should probably keep it moving. We gotta we got things to do. <laughs> uh, she will uh, uh, motion to have you follow her. Uh, as you walk, you do see uh, that there is a sign uh, for like a general goods store and a marketplace and there's like a little blacksmith and there's a, 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 a bakery and all these little little town amenities. Um, there's like a, like a doctor's office and all that kind of stuff. And uh, as you walk past the sign uh, for these places, um, Deborah, go ahead and make a perception check for me. Perception check, uh, 15 plus one. Nice. Uh, you do see that there are two doctors listed. Uh, so there are a pair of docs. Ah! <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Kaboom. There's, there's a payoff. <laughs> uh, the other thing that you pick up with that perception check is that there are no children. No one, there are, appear to be only just very happy adults. Because of all the sex parties. Mm. Listen, mm. Uh, that, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, I'm, I'm seeing there's not many children here and I've got two theories. One, they eat them. You know, mm -hmm. like Hansel and Gretel. Okay. I don't mm -hmm. know if you've read that story, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And then my, the other one is this paradox, right? They've got two doctors. Maybe they're keeping everyone just very healthy, and there's nothing at all shady happening. And it's not like Benjamin Button or anything like that. It's just totally fine. There's two doctors. All right. So are you uh, saying this at full volume with Glenda right there? Yeah. <laughs> she'll say, oh, yeah, I am. She'll say, oh, you don't got to worry about that. The thing about Paradox is that it's a place for people who are lost, you know? Hmm. And most children, they don't know what they want yet, and so they don't have to worry about ending up here. But adults, if they lost, then they need a place to call home, you know? And that's, it's, this is for a place who, for people who feel lost, and they end up here. Glenda, do people feel happy here, or, or do people feel um, like it's purgatory? Oh, I feel super happy here. I think most mm. people feel happy here. And when people because don't... Because of the sex parties. We, well, <laughs> partially because of the sex parties. Of <laughs> but it's a lovely neighborhood, and it gives people hope, and it gives people purpose. And when people feel like they're ready to move on, they can leave. There's, no, mm. there's nothing keeping anybody here. It's just that if you, want, if you feel like you have a direction in life, and you know where you want to go, you can leave. Strad. Mm. Sweet. Cool. Uh, so, so Argentus, where, which? Oh yeah, yeah. Argy's over here. Come on. Okay. Uh, and she will Ar lead Ar you Ar to uh, what looks like a mound, um, like a grass-covered mound that almost is like igloo-shaped, almost that rises out of the bog, uh, that's covered in morning glories and long grasses. Um, and as she approaches, a blue, silver, shimmering shape begins to coalesce from inside and around the mound. And it spins and twirls until it finally stops. Um, and a massive dragon head, translucent, um, but also solid, like, like, um, like glass, uh, stops and stares at you with pupilless eyes, um, and breathes out a puff of brisk mist, like the first frost of autumn, and goes, mm. Mm. And Glenda looks at you and says, oh, Oh, he, uh, uh, they don't talk much. Uh, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to talk to them. Sure, I'll, I'll take a crack at this. Excuse me, dragon. Uh, this is, uh, this is kind of odd, but we, uh, we actually need to be inside you. So if, uh, what, what, no, <laughs> Oh, great orgy, we what? seek no, to no, be no. inside you. Argentus, you know I can't read that. <laughs> orgy, where? Oh, okay. Uh, oh, great glass dragon. You can just open your mouth 
so we could go inside you. That would be cool. We need to find this black box. It's probably giving you heartburn. So, uh, yeah, any chance you could do that for us, oh, powerful dragon? Uh, go ahead and make a persuasion check. How persuasive am I? Minus one, so 14. 14. Argentus will squint a little bit at the at the hastily made cue card mm -hmm. and look over the three of you and look at Glinda tilt their head a little bit. And Glinda is going to go, I don't know what they want. I, I mean, <laughs> that's, that's what they, they, uh, they seem forthright. I, I think that, I don't think you aren't lying, right? No. No. Wait, 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 wait. We should specify. Wait a minute. I didn't like that. I didn't. Am I the only one that caught that? Yeah. It's a, it's, wait, wait, what wait, is wait. that? What, yeah. Back up. Wait. Why? Why are you? Why are you like removing yourself from the situation here? Right? She kind of like. Are we gonna get eaten? Well, the witch said we had to go inside the dragon, so technically. That's and we need Chester. Being eaten. I feel like we should tell this dragon what we're getting. I don't want to be eaten. All right. Yeah. Uh, do you want to? Do you want to let let the dragon know? Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, great dragon! I uh, implore you, uh, myself as small mustard. Uh, Debra, uh, Mustard, comma, Debra. Uh, please, we would like to go inside to retrieve a black box and defeat a mimic named Chester. Uh, you now can go ahead and make a persuasion check, also at advantage. Okay, with advantage, I rolled a six, and then I rolled an 18. Ah! And my uh, uh, perception is plus one, so 19. I'll take that advantage roll. Yeah, uh, it looks like this is more convincing, your earnestness and your forthrightness. Uh, appeases this massive silver dragon spirit. It grins a little bit at your uh, uh, concern, um, and it looks over at Glinda and gives a little wink. And Glinda says, "Oh, y'all gonna be fine. It's gonna be all right." Now, I do. Uh, uh, it looks. It looks like RG is gonna let y'all inside, but I do gotta warn you um, that y y what you're gonna want to do is just get what you came for. And then you're gonna want to not do anything else other than that. All right? Uh, okay. Don't be don't be tempted now. No funny you stuff. Get, Got it. You, if you get if you get temp tempted, that's how people get stuck. Okay. <sighs> Roger that. Take take only the box and leave only footsteps. You know what I'm saying? Wait wait, wait. we want the box. Whoa, wait, wait, and Chester. Yeah we oh, want and let's, Chester. Let's, yeah. Just, yeah yeah yeah. If you can get if you can get whoever Chester is out of there. The box and the and the Chester uh, and, and one souvenir each. You're gonna have to convince RG of that. I ain't no 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 time. no no souvenirs. Okay, yeah, yeah, souvenir, okay. souvenir, souvenir, no, souvenir. No 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 no. no, 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 no. Yeah. It's, it's a dragon. Try to, try to intimidate the dragon. No. <laughs> uh, I don't, I'm bad at yeah. persuasion and intimidation. I got nothing. Let's just oh, go shit, get the box. Listen, the guys. We can buy whatever souvenirs we want from a from, from a gift shop after we get the ten thousand or twenty thousand gold. Is there a paradox gift shop? Oh, honey, there's a par of course there's a Paradox gift shop. Right. You want a t-shirt? Yeah, we can get all the souvenirs okay. we want. We all just right. got to get right. the okay. box okay. and the, okay. the 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 chest, the mimic, and then we got to get the hell out of there, okay? Okay. And maybe an orgy. Stay focused. And, and <laughs> yeah. well, yeah, I mean, obviously, if, the the way, if there's an orgy in there, we're going to stop for the orgy. Well, you kids have fun on in there. Actually, before you go on in, I got some cookies here, and she'll, like, have a, she has a basket that has some cookies in it and says, if you all want to take cookie for the road, feel free. Yeah, can we split this baker dozen of cookies? Sure thing. All right, I'm gonna take the extra one. I want five. Great. All right. Uh, you, you each have uh, a pile of cookies for the road. As a matter of fact, uh, each of these cookies will operate as a good berry. So uh, a good berry uh, will do two things for you. One, it will f make you feel sustained and feed you for 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And as an action, you can eat it to regain one hit point. Well, you <laughs> kids have fun. All right. All right, Hi, thank Glinda. you. Glinda. Uh, see you later. Glinda Bye. Will, the orgy. Will wander off. Yeah, I gotta <laughs> get to the orgy at about, <laughs> about 9 a.m. Yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> So as Glinda toddles off, uh, toddles. the mouth of this great dragon opens, and as it does, the edges of the mouth too open, but 
the actual mound behind it is what also kind of opens behind it. Mm -hmm. Like, Interesting. the reflection revealing the inside of the prized halls. Hmm. And you mm. see shining marble stairs and glimmering pewter banisters that appear to be shaped out of clouds. Um, <gasps> fog billows from the maw entrance like a like a dry ice haunted house, you know, and it ca cascades uh, past your feet. Uh, and it looks like there are stairs that lead down. All right, so uh, yeah, let's I guess get looking for this mimic and this box. So we head down yeah. the stairs. Excellent. Uh, give me a marching order if you'd be so kind. Who's going first? I'll I'll go first. I'm fine with that. I'll go second. All right, I'm in. I'm third, but I'm also like kind of holding on to Kaizen's leg. Right. <laughs> That's adorable. Come on, Debbie. <laughs> you make your way down these stairs and you hold on to the silver, silver banister. And it is a long way, or maybe not. You don't really know how the time works in this place and in this time. It feels like a couple of stories, maybe seven or eight uh, sets of stairs that weave down, 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 until you come to a chamber and the fog kind of lifts just enough from your march to see that this chamber is massive. Maybe 500 feet across, 100 feet tall, domed, full of the most beautiful jewels and riches that you've ever dreamed of. Huge piles of coins the, sizes, the size of houses. Mm -hmm. Oh um, my god. Stacks of art and fine jewelry crafted by dozens of different races. There's an intact ship um, in a pile of gold coins. There's multiple sarcophagi. Uh, there's a pair of sterling steel thrones that are jutting out at various angles. Huge jewels that are displayed on pillows sitting on these cloudstone plinths. Um, there's obelisks and monoliths from fallen cities, gargoyles and statues and just insane amounts of riches, the likes of which you would expect from an ancient silver dragon's Oh, mm -hmm. why didn't we put a claws in there when we get a trinket? Uh, what do you want to do? I mean, it's the dragon stuff. We're already inside the, the dragon. He doesn't even have to eat us. one throne. All I've wanted my whole life is just one throne for the Milfwood Forest. Listen, we don't have a throne. Listen, stainless steel too. That'd be so easy to clean. Uh, Listen, you two. We're, the dragon doesn't even have to get angry and eat us. We're inside the dragon. It's basically already eaten us. It just has to not let us out. Don't steal any of his stuff. I'm what if I want to stay? You just want to stay in here? I don't know. I don't think there's any food in here. Also, I have to... Listen, there's more to life than treasure and gold. There's also revenge. We have to get out of here so we can eventually kill Falamir. I don't want to like live The whole here. reason why we're doing this is for 20,000 gold. Which and we will use buy to buy weapons army. to track and trackers to find and kill Falamir. We're gonna hire a hundred Son of a bitch. Can you guys stay focused? Okay, wait, hold on. What happens if I just hold on to something that I want, but then I don't leave with it? It's just kind of like window shopping. You know what I mean? I just put it in my pocket Ooh, for a little while. No, don't, don't mess with those. Did you hear the like the cryptic warning of only take what you came for and told the dragon you were going to take? There's a whole cryptic warning thing. Well, no, that's a borrow. That's a it's borrow. It's a borrow. It's a borrow. That's right. The property. Yeah, I can I keep it in my shopping sharp. cart. No. If you, don't, if you don't take anything out of the dragon's hoard, it never left the dragon's hoard. Yeah. I'm yeah. taking everything that I can. I'm stuffing it in my pocket. Mm -hmm. And then never leaving. <laughs> yeah. I'll leave it at the door. But for now, I want it. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, go ahead and what do you want to do? I'm, I'm going <laughs> to stuff my pockets 
with Great. everything that I can stuff my pockets. With. And none of these three were ever seen again. <laughs> you can you can find like beautiful brooches of ruby and sapphire, fabulous silk uh, uh, belts and head scarves. There is a fine set of sandals that is made from ooh, ooh. some sort of uh, uh, boutique leather that you can't even ooh. identify, but it shimmers and shines and reflects your reflection in them. Uh, mm. Go ahead and make a investigation check for me. Or perception. Investigation mm. if you're looking for something specific. Perception if you're just looking around. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, since my investigation is a zero and I rolled a four, I'm gonna go with, uh, my perception plus five and make it a nine. All right. So you're, you're window shopping, you know, there's, um, there's a beautiful, uh, like set of clothes, uh, like a, like a three piece suit, uh, a ball, a ball gown. There's an hourglass that appears to be mounted in some sort of quartz housing that is, uh, you know, the size of a human abdomen, just massive. Mm. I mean, the, the goblets and um, sundials. And as you're looking around, you do come across what appears to be, what amounts to be a garden. Um, but it's not really a garden. There's no plants down here. Uh, but it is a garden of like statues and statuary. Um, and this garden of statuary uh, has many uh, beautiful, intricate, life-size statues of humanoids, um, uh, just in interesting poses, some of whom appear to be in uh, reaching, some of whom appear to be um, resting, and uh, just beautiful, all in marble, by the way, uh, just excellent uh, sculpture. Uh, you know, all these folks look, um, nobody looks familiar, but they all just seem have to have very human-like emotions. Um, I don't know if it's because the sculptor, sculptist, sculpt, sculptor? Sculptorizer. Is good? Sculptorizer. The, the, the word you're looking for is sculptorizer. Riser, mm. yes. I don't know if the sculptorizer is just that good or, um, if there's something foul here. I say, you, me, and Krulax, we go into this into this statuary, right? And we punch every single statue square in the genitals. Because <laughs> I think one of these is going to be a mimic, right? Mm. Something in here is a mimic. We need to start testing. So we need it. We should just hit everything we come across. But we have to make sure that we don't break anything because we said that we wouldn't. We we didn't put Wait, it we in our in our. Take anything? What a take and break just rhyme. Take and break. Are we allowed to break stuff in here? Uh, I, I'd probably avoid it. You break it, you buy it. Yeah, you break it, yeah, you okay, buy okay. it. Yeah, okay, so, okay. So, so let's punch it in the genitals, but make sure you don't punch so hard that you're going to break it off. Yeah, right? we, we give it a little, how about we give it a little nut tap? A little tap, tap in yeah, the nuts. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Just a little. Flick them nuts. Mm -hmm. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you've you've all found your way into this uh, statuary garden, um, and you're gonna gonna start flicking some flicking some beans. Yeah, I guess uh, that's the game punching, plan. Punching some balls <laughs> for some uh, reason. Uh, all three of you roll a d20 for me. This is a this is a luck check. Eighteen. Nineteen. Nine. Is that lucky? All right. Uh, you're uh, walking around you know, slapping marble, uh, feeling good <laughs> about yourselves. And Kaizen, you arrive at a statue just before Deborah, with a face that you recognize and a real shitty mustache. <gasps> Guys, um, listen, I, I, I'm into weird stuff, but I don't know about flicking the bean on this one. What are you um, talking about? I, I I I can't remember the face so much because I remember the smell a lot more, but I'm pretty sure that this is Falamir. You found Falamir? I mean, look at the mustache. That's oh, spot on. Wow, that's yeah, that's uncanny. Wait, All right, scoot over. I'm punching this nutsack as hard as I can. <laughs> yeah, hit him in the nuts. Roll an attack. 
Oh, I'm winding up this fist. I'm doing like a like a wonk 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 wonk. Oh, I rolled a three. <laughs> All right. Well, you, I mean, it's a statue. You're not gonna miss. <laughs> uh, you do you do graze kind of, and you scrape your knuckle a little bit. Go ahead and take a damage. <laughs> um, ah. oh. But uh, but you get you get you know you feel like when if and when the uh, stone form of Falomer uh, becomes conscious again, he's, it's not gonna it's not gonna be great. So this is him trapped in a statue. It's not someone carved a statue of him. Um, go ahead and make an insight check. Okay. Guys, is this a statue someone carved of Falomir? Or is this like a spell? Oh my god, I rolled a 20. Oh! Yeah. Wow. Well, uh, you see the face of your former compatriot, and you see the pose that he's in of uh, sort of like holding a pile of gold in what looks like a robe uh, in his arms trying in like a sneaky pose mm -hmm. um, I can as see if, it in my head as if he was trying to leave this place with uh, things that he was not allowed to leave this place with uh -huh. see a lot of the people here uh, appear to be either hiding things in jackets made of stone of course now or stuffing pockets made of stone now. You see that, Kaizen? You got turned to stone because he was stealing, because he's a stealing dirty thief, and you were being just like him. Yeah, this is my hidden blade, just saying, got it beforehand. <laughs> yeah. he's, uh... Check the security footage. <laughs> <laughs> she came in with this. You also just... do see that there are some poses of very content people who are just sort of hugging other statues, or sleeping on fine pillows or um, in other ways loving what they've found and have decided that this is where they want to remain. All right. Well, let's not find anything too cool in here. <laughs> yes. That's, yeah. that's what you get with your natural 20. All right. Um, do you want anything else? What else are you looking for? I want to make a perception check. Anything that looks suspicious out of place like it could be a mimic. Sure. Anything moving slightly or breathing, plus one, 13. Abysmal. You're abysmal. <laughs> Stop it. It's not terrible. 13 is unlucky for some. Mm -hmm. um, but it's above 10. It's better than it's average. It's above 10. Exactly. It's fine. Um, and you're looking for things that are out of place. Unfortunately, this place is a lot of things that are out of place. It's a mimic. It can change shapes. And its name is Chester. Is there any chest here that looks like it's out of place or different than the other chests? You're so smart. Um, Taking a, a shot. 13, I would say that there are no chests that look different. Mm, However, Worth a shot. You, you do notice that among the things that are out of place, there appears to be an oddly shaped building. Mm. There appears to be what looks like an old west jailhouse hmm. made of stone um it's got the words jail written in big block letters uh on a wooden sign uh it's got a big iron door in front of it it's got two small windows on either side and it is oddly flared in such a way as to be chest shaped hey guys uh, you know, it's it's a bit strange, uh, but is it me or does this jailhouse thing over here look like a giant chest? No, you're I not think wrong. You're, right. you're not yeah. wrong. It does look like a set of boobs. Should we? <laughs> <laughs> Clip it, print it. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I wasn't talking about a giant rack. Although if you squint just right. No, no, I was talking about like a treasure chest. Oh, yes, it definitely looks like a treasure chest. You just see boobs everywhere, don't you? <laughs> it's, uh, it's a curse. We got to get, when we get out of here, we're going to find you a good orgy. Get this out of your system. <laughs> uh, should, should we just yell the name? Should we just ask? What? Uh, yeah, let's walk up to like it. Uh, worth a shot. I mean, it probably won't work, but uh, hey, hey, are you Chester? 
I, I, I yell at the building. <laughs> yep, you yell at the building. That's, I yell at this make building. A, make a... Jeez, what kind of check should this be? Make chest a... check. Chest huh? check. Chest Checking check. out that chest. <laughs> That's right. I would say make a performance check here. Okay. Oh, jeez. That's a two. You approach the building... And you yell, hey, Chester, and the hey, building does are, not are you Chester? respond. Yes, are you Chester? You are, however, how close are you to it? I'm right outside of it. I'm like, okay. uh, you know, I yeah. could, I could so, stride in in two or three strides. Right, so as you, so you're close enough to look in through the bars. Sure, and, yeah. Because the door itself is like, it's like a portcullis, like mm-hmm. one of those um, classic iron... Uh, gates and inside uh, you can see uh, what looks like a jail cell Um, there's a couple of sets of shackles on the back wall Um, stereotypical trappings of a uh, what what you might call a jail room or perhaps a dungeon Um, and in the center of the room there's an old dusty rotting cloak Looks like it's covering a small pile of something underneath. I think we should try and break in and and investigate. Uh, Do do you want? uh, Listen, you were you like whispered that I'm. Can I try just saying it with my chest really quick? Can I just try saying a Chester? Absolutely. Projection in there. Yeah, go for it, man. Uh, Uh, I'm gonna roll. I rolled a 15. Ooh, for performance. Yes, plus one, so that's 16. All right. And your goal is to try to wake wake up Chester. Yeah, I wear, I'm, I'm yelling towards that cloak and pile. You see uh, the shutters of the two windows on the sides of the buildings blink a little bit. <laughs> um, and then they open like a pair of eyes. Uh, the remaining glass panes of the broken glass uh, move like pupils to look down at you. And the door... <sighs> Yawns awake. Says, "Hey, what are you doing here?" Oh, guys, I just remembered. The lady Esmeralda. She said we needed to go into a dragon and kill a dungeon. He's a dungeon. We got. We got to kill this guy. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I just I'm now sorry. remembered this. I have a terrible goldfish memory, but you guys forgot too. You guys. Yeah. You, you all. I'm sorry. I must. I just woke up, so maybe I misunderstood y'all. Are you trying to kill a dungeon? Misunderstand this, bitch! And I swing at the, okay. the bars. <laughs> yes. go, ahead make a, go ahead and make an attack roll. I and will. Then, we'll, then we will roll initiative after you make your attack roll. And I roll a 14 plus... Can I life steal What do I get? Plus, plus dexterity? Object? Oh, wait. Uh, 14 plus strength for you for the attack. Strength. Okay. So 17... <laughs> Battle axe? Yeah. 17 will hit. Yeah! Uh, Kaiser, the answer is yes. Mimics are living creatures. Even though they take the shape of something else, they are, in fact, uh, alive. I can life steal from a jail. (laughs) Nice! Yeah, suck the life out of that prison. (laughs) So, 17. uh, How much damage? Aha! An eight! Suck it! (laughs) Suck it, Chester! Suck it, Chester, you you jail! the, The good news is that you have sunk your axe into this uh, jail cell named Chester. And as you do, it's like slicing into viscous jello. And it's, it's, um, it is gooey and gross and like purple and green as you make a big slash in it. And it's also adhesive, mm. which means that your ax is now stuck to the to this giant mimic. Oh, um, oh that's bad. That means that anything that it touches adheres to it. You can make, an, you can make a strength check to pu- try to pull it out, or you can just let go of the ax and it would be stuck in it until the mimic dies. Uh, sure, I'll try and make a strength check. I have plus three to strength. Great. Try and pull it back out. I've rolled an eight. Plus three is 11. 
Not good enough. All right. Your axe is stuck currently in the Oh, mimic. no. Damn. Hey, guys. Now, Chester's now really gooey. <laughs> now we're going to roll for initiative. As Chester says, well, if I, I trust you ain't trying to kill me because that'd be breaking the law. That means you'd have to go to jail. <laughs> and it, like, <laughs> opens its mouth at you. Cool. I mean, not for us. It's not good for us, but it's cool. <laughs> but it is cool. Uh, does anyone have higher than a 20? No. I, I rolled a, a 13 for Ooh. initiative, a plus one 14. Okay. I just rolled a 20. Nice. Hey. Natural or? Nat 20. Nat 20. What's that total? Plus five. Wow. 25. Jesus. I wasted my... Yeah, Friggin you're going first <laughs> so hard. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're going before players in other campaigns. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, man. Krulax, what did you roll for initiative? Oh, initiative plus one, so eight. Um, unsurprisingly, Kaizen, you're up first. We didn't go inside, did we? No, we I didn't don't know go if we in. can. Or, or, you're, uh, never you're, mind, let me not say that, because I don't know. You yelled at it before you did anything else, so. Yeah, we, we didn't try to fault. go inside, but but the inside is his mouth, so I don't think I want to go inside of it. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to get close to it because what if my hands get stuck? You know, it's gooey. Right. Very likely that that would happen. All right, so yeah, I am gonna use my longbow. Great. Oh no. Okay, I rolled a four. My dexterity is a plus five. And your proficiency is plus two. Two. So four plus eleven. five plus two is eleven. Eleven is not going to hit. Mm, yeah. Mm, glad I went first, guys. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, it's I'm a little rusty. How did you miss I, a I, building? I'm <laughs> a little rusty. Couldn't hit the broad side, side of, of a barn. broad side of a dungeon. Listen, apparently. my best weapons are here and here. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, to be fair, <laughs> yeah. the, this this giant brave little toaster has just woken up and is yelling at you, so mm-hmm. I, I, I get being a little rattled. A little freaked out. You need yeah. some praxis. Pra- <laughs> okay, oh, that, like that one doesn't. Praxis. Right. Yeah. That one doesn't really work. Guys, I've used no. most I've used most of the very uh, it, the very obvious was. axe puns in my previous campaigns. So yeah. I'm running low here. Can we just kind of <laughs> give me a, a pass on that one? Most of your puns have been taxed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Uh, it is going to be Chester's turn next. Uh, I rolled halfway decently on my uh, on my initiative. Um, I believe that the two people who are up front are Krulax and Debra. Uh, Krulax is the one that said, we have to kill the dungeon. So I'm going to go ahead and attack uh, Krulax. Well, well, but the whole lady said that. I was just repeating what she said. Yeah, don't kill the, the messenger. Old lady. Uh, that is going to be a 17 to hit. You. Armor is 16, so yeah, that hits. Okay, I'm going to hit you for five. Ouch. Ooh. And you are grap. Oh. Oh no. I'm oh no. Sticky. Then I'm going to make a second attack. Um. And the second attack is going to be the swallow action. Oh, no. So it dealt you that much damage, and now it's going to swallow you. Boo! Um, this means that you are pulled inside of the jail, and the door slams shut behind you. Mm-hmm. Oh, balls. That's bad. Typically, this means that you would be blinded and restrained. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm gonna say that since this is a building and you can, there are like windows and stuff, you're not blinded. You are, however, restrained as you are sticky. Uh, we'll say that you're stuck to some of the shackles uh, off to the side. However, you do see the pile in the middle that is covered in mm. cloaks. Um, and you are also gonna take some additional uh, acid damage real quick. No! Uh, that is gonna be 16 acid damage. What? That's way too much you, acid are damage. You al- are, you, are you live, bro? I am, but I'm at yeah. 10 life points. Well, that's oh. all I can do on my turn. A bunch of antacid. We need that's some right. antacid. Yeah. Okay. That's all I can do on my turn. It's Deborah's turn. Can I do an action along with an attack? Tell me what you uh-huh. wanna do. I want to take from my bag, I've got a light hammer. I want to toss it. I want to see if I can toss that through the window towards where Krulax is, like by by their feet. Yeah, you can do that. That's fine. Okay. I'm going to toss my light hammer through the window 
uh, towards you. Just hopefully, if there's any way, if you ever need a tool, anything, I just want that to be near you. You've got a hammer. That seems like something you'd like. Oh, cool. Uh, I have a question. Uh, can I do another action or one action limit? Nope, that was fine. You, you haven't okay. done... Well, that was a free action. I as well. I have with me a little bag of sand. Okay. All right? <laughs> I would like to throw the no. sand around where the axe is stuck. You, you want to do it on the mouth, you think? I mean, I feel like the tongue is what's sticky. Yeah. Okay, so let's try to throw this bag of sand onto the tongue. Okay. Um, if, it's, if the mouth is still open. I want to, you know, open it and disperse this big bag of sand. Okay. You can absolutely throw the bag of sand um, into the mouth. I would say that that uh, makes, uh, makes Chester... <coughs> what you wild why throw sand in my mouth? <coughs> okay. Cinnamon uh, and, challenge. <laughs> yeah. And the, uh, the, the gate will, uh, spring, will swing open. Um, Ooh. so the gate is open. Krulax is still inside and, you know, digested, di digested, but, uh, the, the gate is still open and that's not, I'll say that you can just toss those things. Those are free actions. Okay. Thank you so much, Ruben, because what I would like to do with the gate now open, uh, I would like to use my, my, uh, if I can, my boon, my, uh, I believe it's called the arcane chains. What, what was it called? The, the chain is more of a, is more of a symbolic chain that connects oh. you to your, your friend, the animal. Uh, see, I thought I had a, okay, that's fine. <laughs> so instead of what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my fire hands. Okay. Mm. And I want to just fire hands on this tongue. I want to fire hands on that sand, make it turn to some like molten glass bits. Maybe there's a little Ooh. stuff in there. I just okay. want to like, you know, just burn that shit. Great. Uh, I have to make a dexterity save, right? Uh, yes. I am actually not particularly particularly dexterous because I'm a building. <laughs> yeah. And I, uh, what's your DC? Hit DC says dexterity 11. Uh, I fail. <gasps> oh! Yes! How much damage am I taking? Uh, 4d6. And I lied, Ooh. it's actually 12 because I got plus one. So yeah, four. burn the mother down! Yes! All right, first one is a two, followed by a five, oh. followed by a four, oh. followed by a two. So a total of 13. Damn! Nice. Woohoo! That is an axe load of fire! An axe load! Yeah, yeah, like we it, heard it the first time. But I, why did you repeat it? I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Deborah, uh, hands in pockets, tosses a hammer and some sand out, <laughs> and in one fluid motion brings their thumbs and forefingers together to cast the burning hands and wow. uh, lights up a little bit of that barrel roof uh, action that's happening there. Uh, it's, it's not looking uh, great, but it's still, it's not, it's not burning down. You're not burning mm. down mm. the house. Burning, burning down, down the house. <laughs> um, Krulax. Yes. It's now your turn. Uh, well, first of all, I need to use action surge. Oh, okay. Or wait, no, no, that's, wait, no, that's not what I was thinking. What, uh, second wind. Second yes, second wind, wind. yes. 1d10 plus three. You gain some three. of them hit points. Yes. Rolling the d10. Nine. Nine plus. Eight. So 13 come back. So there you go. Well, back. you rolled a nine. Well, nine. Oh, yeah. Plus three. So nine plus three. So 12. 12. You get 12 back. Thank you for mathing correctly. Okay. So uh, I guess with my next action, I'd like to uncover that like shroud or whatever it is to see if sure. I can find the box. That's a free action. You can throw off the shroud and in the pile there, there's a number of interesting treasures. There mm -hmm. appears to be uh, a very fine, uh, what looks like a music box almost. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple of scroll cases uh, and you do indeed see a black wood box with silver trim. Hmm. Music box, huh? That sounds Ooh. interesting. But we're not really supposed to take anything. But also, this is Chester's thing. We did say You're okay. supposed to take that that black wood box, though. Yeah, I do. Okay, it's about I, four long, four arms long. I grab the black wood box and sprint for the door, which is now open. It is open. Mm -hmm. uh, it is, however, very sticky in here, like a very disgusting college bar, and you're gonna have to make an <laughs> escape DC. To get out. Okay. This is going to be uh, athletics. D20, I rolled a 14. Oh. Plenty good enough. 
I'm gonna give. I'm gonna let you know. If you don't disengage, this building is going to get an attack of opportunity on you. Okay, I would like to disengage. Full action uh, to disengage, and you're able to get behind uh, your compatriots. You're out of dodge with the box. Guys, I got the box. That's pretty much all we needed. I don't think we're gonna yeah. be bringing Chester with us. We're not gonna get the 20,000. There's no way, yeah, huh? Yeah, well, unless oh. you think you can haul Chester back. Right. What um, if we take a chunk of Chester? I will <laughs> no. say that uh, Deborah is still directly in front of Chester. Shit, everybody, oh, shit. everybody pull back, I yell. Uh, Kaizen, it's your turn. Um, I am gonna, I realize I have a green dragon tail, which can act as a magical whip. Yes. Um, I, I picked that up in our last adventure, so I'm gonna try to magic, magic whip the, the tongue. Nice. Okay, Ooh. sure. Whip it up. So go ahead and roll your attack. <gasps> okay, I got a 10. Uh, yeah. Go ahead and roll a D4 plus one damage. It's a uh, four plus one. Nice. Hey. Hey. You deal the tongue five. I've and it never lashes used to back. And the tongue, of course, is like one of the iron bars, right? It's, mm-hmm. it's uh, rusted metal and it sort of goes, ah, that real hurt. I don't like that at all. I've never <laughs> used a whip before. I think I'm a natural. Woo, uh, <laughs> nice. Again, the whip, though, is wrapped around the tongue now because it's adhesive. I think I lost the whip, but I used it one time in my life. <laughs> let go of the whip. I held on to my axe and I got eaten alive. <laughs> Jesus, let it go. To, uh, uh, as a reminder, your axe is still in the mimic. Good thing you have a lot of axes. I only mm. had the one whip. I also still have a whip axe from my last adventure. <laughs> so I can whip yeah. axe it, too. Um... Uh, do you have anything else you'd like to do on your turn? I, I'm not able to use any sort of action to try to grab um, uh, Deborah, and can I? Hmm. I'll let you spend a key point to try to pull Deborah away. Yes. <gasps> I don't need my keys. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's get Deborah. All right. So you're gonna use a key point and pull Deborah. Deborah, are you willing to be pulled? Oh, I am more than willing. I'm ready and able. All right. So you're able to pull Deborah away. That's why I got these fast monkish elf legs. (laughs) 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 Grab little Debbie and just run back. Which puts you and puts all of you about 25 feet away from uh, from Chester. Sweet. Fuck you, Chester. I got Debbie. It is, however, Chester's turn. Oh no. Oh, Chester no. is going to roll. Uh, and, uh, well, first of all, Chester's going to move. Um, Chester can move? What? Ch- it's Wait, a building! The dungeon can move? Come on! He's not fast. And then the um, pseudopod has 10 feet of reach. Oh, so God. I can barely oh, no. get. Uh, I'll get Deborah. No! No! No, not our Deborah! No. Uh, that is going to be 18 to hit you. Oh, that's definitely hitting me. Okay. You take um, seven bludgeoning Ooh. damage. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the second attack is going to pull you oh, towards no. it. Uh, it does not get you into its jail cell, though, so you don't take the acid damage. Uh, mm-hmm. But it is going to pull you 15 feet towards it. Okay. But you okay. are grappled, uh, and it's your turn. Uh, all right, so I, I am at 16 health currently. I'm currently being pulled by the tongue. Honestly, I'm going to turn, and I'm going to face this open mouth. I'm going to shoot right at where I think the tongue kind of meets what would be like its jaw, almost like the teeth of the bars. I'm going to aim down the base of the tongue, and I'm just going to straight up fire hands it. Let's go. Shoot some nice. fire down its mouth. Yeah. Absolutely. Nice. Uh, I'll make another dexterity saving throw. Not dexterous. That's a 10 total. Ooh, I only need 11. So 3, 4d6 now, right? 4d6. Yep, I'm adding Come them up. We got a 5. Fire We've hands. got a 6. Yes. We got a 4. Nice. nice. And we got a 1. 16 damage. Yes. Wow. 
Chester's looking not great. Uh, <laughs> it's certainly burning down the house now. Burning the first down the house. Maybe not so much, but it's it's looking uh, it's not looking great anymore. Uh, and Chester is Chester's mad. Uh, the flames are kind of roiling behind the panes of glass that are his eyes, and he goes, I don't <laughs> like you one bit, little one. <laughs> <laughs> nice! Krulax, it's your turn. Okay, let me let me see what I got here. Hey, it says here I have a, a robe of useful items. <laughs> yeah, you sure do. <laughs> I don't even remember getting that, but I, uh, I yeah, actually be vaguely remember getting that. Let's see what's on the robe of useful items. Yeah. So uh, it looks like you've got a dagger, a bullseye lantern, a steel mirror, a 10-foot pole, some hemp and rope, a sack, a, an iron door, a wooden ladder, a riding horse, what? a pit, a rowboat, uh, two ma- or yeah, two mastiffs, and a window. Dude, can I throw a ma- a mastiff is a dog, right? Yes. You you're gonna throw a dog at me, bro? You, a, you also have a horse and a pit. I throw a I throw a mastiff patch off of Great. my robe, and I say, "Sick him, boy." <laughs> Excellent. So you rip this patch off the robe and toss it towards this building, and the fluttering piece of cloth turns into just the most regal Saint Bernard that you've ever seen. Hedo, we're sorry. With it's like a halfling well. saddle on the back. Um, and it, it even has like a little monocle. It goes, I say, to war, to war, gentlemen, to war. <laughs> Um, oh and no, it, it talks. Oh yeah, go for the tongue, it's boy. So cute. Sever the tongue. Absolutely. To <laughs> glorious victory, everyone. Uh, go ahead and roll a d20 for its attack. Okay, this is great. A plus, I summoned a, a plus. talking dog, and I just rolled an 18. Plus what? Oh, nice. <laughs> that's, uh, that's gonna hit. Roll a d6 plus one piercing damage. You got it. D6, two plus one, so three. It takes three damage as uh, the Mastiff uh, takes a big bite out of uh, the welcome mat. I say my mouth appears to be stuck to the door frame. How are you talking? <laughs> I'm, I'm a magical All right, yes, dog. the magic. I should have had Deborah try and get on it. Whoops. Yeah. That would have oh, been a better one, one, right? <laughs> oh, I got a second one. Bonus action. <laughs> action surge. Action surge. That's right. a that's a good point, Debra. Debra, good point. I do have another one. I throw the other one back with the mastiff. Okay. Retrieve Debra. Oh, you throw it at Debra? No, no, I throw it and I give the yeah, I throw it towards Debra and I give the order to get okay. Debra. So it. Debra, when it gets close, grab onto the saddle. Okay. Let's get him, boys. And this dog um, is much shaggier and has a much more um, like ragtag barding <laughs> setup. But it, it gallops underneath of Debra, scooping him up, and uh, runs also straight at the at the. Um, at Chester. Oh wait, it's it's still attacking. Oh no, are you trying to get him away or not? <laughs> I just wanted him to get him and get out of range. Yeah, we're just. Oh okay. We don't, we don't oh, need to oh, fight I this thing. We're, I, I think we can outrun it. this thing unless you guys want to try and actually kill the whole building. Hey, let's run and let's kill it as we're running. Okay. Uh, We've so got the, range this weapons. dog is going to make an opposed strength check against the building mm -hmm. to oh try God. to pull Deborah away. Okay. Uh, that's a four for the dog, uh, which is not. Oh great. damn. And uh, higher for the building. So the, the <laughs> Mastiff gets a mouthful of Deborah and says, Come on, we gotta get out of here. Um, <laughs> and uh, can't exact, can't pull Deborah away, but there is sort of a tug of war happening between this dog uh, and, and the chew toy. <laughs> I think I'm out of actions now. I threw two of my patches. You do have one bonus action. Oh, left, I do? Because you used an action to. Use an action to use a patch. Bonus action to action surge. I'm sorry. Bonus action to second wind. Then you action surge for a full another turn. Oh. You used your action to pull off a patch. Now you have another bonus action. Oh shit! Can I use my whip axe? Sure. Okay. I'll try to. Uh, I mean, unless I have anything, it's fine. I, I hit him with my whip axe. All right. So we're rolling the d20. 18 plus. Hits. Okay. Hits. Yeah, and I'm going for the tongue. 
Right where the dog, uh, yeah. That's a four plus my strength, which is three, seven. All right. You hit the, uh, the, uh, the tongue and uh, just beyond where the dog and Deborah are pulling. Uh, and you're going to give them, not only did you deal damage, you will also give them advantage on their next check to try to escape. Oh, sweet. Ooh. Awesome. Uh, is that, that is the end of Krulax and the, the team, the dog team. Yeah. Yeah, we got um, two NPCs now helping us, right? <laughs> I say, well, good show, sir. <laughs> that one's still <laughs> stuck, but... Yeah, well, yeah, but he's trying. We're trying our best down here, boss, but it's looking right and tough. <laughs> Kaizen, it's your turn. Um, God, I... This is a bad time to have unarmed strikes as your best <laughs> combat. This building is yeah. looking pretty rough. So if you if you think you can dish out a little bit, of, I mean, not a little bit, but some damage, you might be able to just finish it off. Come Ooh. on, you, you, you think you can do 12 damage? I don't know. I, my best way to damage is melee attacks, and I don't think I can melee it. My my hands are gonna get stuck. Don't you have like shurikens? No. Uh, didn't you I use don't. that shurikens? I've, Did you throw you them got off? Two really? arms. You've got two legs, Ow. and you've got Ow. a headbutt. Yeah. And, and on your greaves. And you've got a badonk. Yeah. Didn't you have a sword? Wait. Oh yeah. You've <laughs> you got, got a knife, knife on your wrist. wrist dagger. Oh, oh yeah. The hidden and blade. Then you that knife. <laughs> blade it. Blade what it. What if everything gets stuck, y'all? If it if it gets stuck, somebody better come and get me. All right. I'm gonna go use my unarmed strike, which is going to chain attack into a flurry of blows. Perfect. Go ahead and make. Woo. I think that that's three total attack rolls for me. So three d twenty, three d twenties. Yep, three d twenties. One, two, three. Ooh, okay. We've got a seven, a seven, and a sixteen. Now, all of those are gonna hit. Oh, Ooh. not hard to hit. This <laughs> Go, Kaizen. Go My Kaisen. arms are here, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Those are arms? No, those are guns. Yeah, well, tell them welcome to the gun show. <laughs> so go ahead and roll three unarmed strike damage. All right, so it's four plus five, so it's nine. Okay. Three plus five, that's eight. Ooh. And a four plus five, which is another nine. <gasps> oh! You use one fist and you clock it and you sense that your fist is getting stuck to the building, but you know that you caused some damage. Ripples uh, show up in the side of the stonework that is just not really stone, it's mimic. You put Ooh. another fist into the other side of the door frame. Yeah! And, and you are, you can tell that the structural integrity of this jello is not holding together. And with your last hit, tell me how you put an end to oh. Chester. The dog. Oh. I am so hungry because I know that I could life steal at this point, but I'm just gonna annihilate him. I, uh, I I have my favorite song in my head. It goes one punch, <laughs> and I just <laughs> <laughs> annihilate him right in uh, what would be the nose, but uh, it's, nice. it's just. It's just teeth. Yeah, the jailhouse <laughs> sign right above the, the door frame is uh, goes, bah, the closest bah, bah, thing to a nose. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You So you punch that hanging door sign and it spins. Um, and as it does, the, uh, the entire gelatinous structure of Chester starts to dissipate and is Ooh. succumbing to the flames and the damage from the punches and the axe blows, and it says, oh, well, at least I don't gotta be around here no more. <laughs> oh, that's oh, sad. That sad. That sad. But also, yeah. holy wow. shit, you have to make Kaisen, sad? <laughs> yeah. Kaisen just punched a building to death. Way to go, <laughs> Kaisen. <laughs> that was so dope. <laughs> it, there goes our, our 10 grand extra, but you know. Whatever, we, we, were, we, were we bringing, beat a dungeon, yeah. guys. <laughs> We weren't bringing that thing back anyway. I wasn't carrying it, so. <laughs> uh, you are able to recover your uh, your axe, Krulax. Oh, sweet. Yeah, uh, I pulled my axe out of the slime. also recover the whip axe. The whip axe. And, <gasps> and the my dragon tail. tail. Yep. Yeah. Uh, everything that you all brought 
uh, you are able to recover. Oh wait, what happened to the dogs? Uh, the dogs are still alive. Uh, hey! The dogs are gonna, I guess they're just gonna hang out for can, a minute. Can I name the dogs? Uh, abs of course. I would like dogs. to name one of the dogs Braxton and the other uh, Bob. Tony. Tony. Bra Bob. Oh, no, no, that's hilarious. Braxton and Tony, yes. <laughs> Tony Braxton? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Braxton and, Bra and Tony are the dogs. That's great. great. Uh, Braxton is the British one and Tony is the cowboy. All right. Um, okay. <laughs> and I guess they'll just be your dogs now. <gasps> this is awesome. Uh, I have dogs. <laughs> talking go. dogs. Talking, We're talking dogs. dogs now. I'm adding them to my inventory. All right. Well, uh, I guess we just take the box we're supposed to take and we leave. For the RG. On the way out, I want to like, I want to, I'm sorry. I, I want to spit on the, on the statue uh, that we saw of Falomir. Yeah, that's a good plan. I think we that all just real quick. Yeah, we, know we all spit on the statue. On the way out, we just we should just leave a little a little mark. I just want one more punch. One one more punch to the balls. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I guess we could theoretically try and like take him with us. <laughs> well, if you take something, wait. Is is he technically part of the dragon's horde? Um make an insight check yeah. for me Ooh. to discern dragon law. Okay. <laughs> real quick. Relax. I only That's rolled a, a six. <laughs> Can someone else try and roll to decide? Yeah, I, I, yeah I, I'd like to roll for it. Sure. Come on, come on, come on. Oh my god, it's a 20! Nice. And, oh. and I have plus five for insight. Oh, we, we're taking them. Yeah, so you think interpreting dragon law, you could argue both sides of this. You could argue that now that Falomir is uh, made of stone and has been uh, captured that he is a part of this horde. However, you could also argue that were Falomir to not, um, were Falomir to be removed from the horde, that he would be his own person and would therefore not be subject to whatever weird morality system uh, Argentis uses to capture people. It's probable that if you took away the things that Falomer had that he was trying to steal from his hands and then took him out with you, that would probably suffice. Guys, what do you think? We could uh, try to chip away all of the gold that uh, Falomer is greedily trying to steal. And, and then drag him out? Just drag yeah, him you, out. Yeah, we got the help of the dogs. We could probably drag I, him out. I trust, I trust uh, Kaizen. Kaizen knows dragon law. I think she's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's, uh, and to be fair, we're not saving him. We're going to take horrific vengeance on him when we transform him back into a, a human, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay, yeah, a few yeah. more he's hits to the balls yeah. before, uh, you yeah. know. Let's, let's do that. I have Smith's tools, so there's probably like a hammer or something in there. Oh, let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, can, hey, you can, and also with your dwarvish uh, heritage, you yeah. can stone, stone cutting. cutting. Yeah, I'll, I'll handle cutting, it. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. and I if will, you you know take off an arm, that's you know yeah. that's fine. I'm that's okay. Right. Like take a couple fingers off. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you take those take middle fingers time. off. You can take some time to chisel out uh, the portions that you feel like uh, are are what Falomer stole. If you so chose, you could chisel off whatever you wanted. But you mm -hmm. know what? We'll leave him intact for now. Okay. Um, but as you chisel away what looks like marble coins. As they're chiseled away, they become gold coins once more and mm -hmm. tinkle to the ground. Mm -hmm. um, cool. Proving to you that this is some sort of shape change uh, that has happened here. Between the group of you, you can tow him back up the stairs. All right, so then we exit. Yeah. You emerge uh, back up through the misty cavern uh, and out through the fog uh, back into Paradox. Uh, and behind you, uh, the great uh, spirit dragon looks down at the stone Falomer, uh, sees that the riches have been chiseled away, and grunts a nod. <clears throat> looks at the box. <laughs> Nobody else took anything, right? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Right. The, the eyes flash. 
uh, just to make sure that nothing else has been taken. And the form of Argentus, the, the dragon, coalesces back into the mound. You motherfuckers, good job for not stealing anything. Yeah, we all did good, we didn't steal. <laughs> we got Falomir too, we got everything we wanted. Yeah, uh, yeah. You are back in Paradox, uh, Glinda, uh, comes up and says, Oh, wow, y'all weren't going that long, were you? That was pretty nice. Well done. We're ready uh, for that orgy now. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a joke. It's a joke. Uh, orgy yeah. and cookies. Orgy, orgy and cookies. <laughs> oh, yeah, we did that. Oh, yeah, I eat, I eat one of the cookies, too. Yep. Hey, let's <laughs> all eat a cookie. Get, I get one health for every. Yeah, you get a health back. Now, I, I guess, and Glinda will say, now, I guess y'all will be on your way. Uh, it, was, it was lovely having you, because I assume you found what you were looking for. Yeah, we did. We found this box here. Well, it was it was real nice meeting y'all, and uh, I would say, come, ba- come on back, but y'all never come back here. You can't now. Once you leave, there's no way to come back. Oh, no! But also... Ooh. Bye. <laughs> yeah. We got to hit us up on Facebook. Yeah, we got a we got a big face scroll. Yeah, we got a big old pile of money <laughs> waiting scroll. for us. So as nice as you all are, and oh, well, thank you for the cookies. Got, if you've got one of them sending messages, maybe that'll be able to get through. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah we well, yeah, totally. We'll stay in touch. Yeah, we'll, we'll be rich. Yeah. We can do it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll write on y'all's face scroll pages once a year for your birthday. Oh, thanks. All right, y'all take care. Let's get our money, guys. <laughs> uh, can I, uh, can I, I know that we, we've got to leave, but uh, it takes an hour, but I want to just at whatever point I can conjure a familiar of a very large elephant to then carry the statue for us. <laughs> so that we don't have to do, you, you I just get it. Think, I think that an elephant is beyond the realm of gorilla. what you can do. What about gorilla? Hey, God, wait, wait. My, my robe of many things has a horse. <laughs> oh, we... perfect. And wait, maybe a sled? Uh, yeah. At least a, an iron door that you could turn into a sled. <laughs> You're right, and I'll yeah. use my and I'll make a familiar into a second horse, even if it's yeah. Be so a they can one. they can great. Yeah, they can. Uh, they can carry it. carry it. You so you get a a pony and a horse and two mastiffs. Mm-hmm. Uh, to and use a one of your other patches to. Let's say let's let's use this wooden ladder ladder that's twenty four feet long, because mm-hmm. uh, an iron door seems heavy. Well, no, there's a rowboat. We toss it in the boat. Oh, there you go, yeah. rowboat. Rowboat's way. We'll put some put some like uh, runners on it or something and <laughs> improvise. Perfect. So as you leave Paradox, you look behind you and there's no remains of the paradox that you came from. You think you there's probably something like a tower in the distance, but other than that, there's nothing but trees and the rest of the swamp. All right. A tower. A know, tower. It's like from a bordering nation. I don't know. Yeah, well, it, was, it, it wasn't there when we set out, but I guess we're just in a different part of the bog. Oh, yeah. You know what I think? Yeah. I, think that's, I think that's the, what is it, KPCC? I think that's the local radio. I think that's the NPR station. Yeah. Spooky Battle Bog. Yeah. Shout out to the PCC. Spooky Spooky Battle Bog. All right, I guess we (laughs) need to find Esmeralda. She knows the whole bog, so she'll probably find us. Yeah, let's just yell her name. One, two, three. Esmeralda! Esmeralda! Get the dogs in on it. Let's try one more time. Yeah. Yeah. One, two, three. Esmeralda! 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 Thanks, Ruben. Yeah, of course. Um, and as if on cue, a uh, a lantern light begins swaying about 50 feet oh. in the distance and comes towards you and says, Oh, yeah, 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 well done. Hey, thanks. Yeah, we got your box here. Uh, here's so, the box. I'm so happy. Thank you so much for the box. We also, right. we killed Chester. I get what you meant, meant about we can't bring him back because he's giant. <laughs> I see. I see what uh, I see. What he, the problem was there. He's, he's, he's a big boy. He's a big mm. boy. But um, I'm glad. Yeah, we're back dungeon. And we're able to survive, and this was very nice of you. Thank you so much. Great. Following uh, directions, good. Yeah, yeah. Now we would like the monies. Oh yeah, that yes, 10, yes, yes, of course. And uh, an explanation. Uh, how about uh, we'll start with we'll start with the uh, with the ten thousand. How's that sound? A bippity boppity gold and uh, a pile of 
10,000 uh, gold pieces appears <laughs> behind you uh, in in like a large um, in a large chest. Not All another right. mimic, That's is awesome. it? That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yo, uh, hook that chest up to the ladders. Let's <laughs> get back to town. Oh, wait, wait, what's in the box? Yeah, what's in the box? Yeah, what's in the box? <laughs> what's, in the what's in the box? Esmeralda, what's, what's in the box? You all turned around to look at the 10,000 gold pieces. Mm. Oh, when you turn shit. back around, God damn it. there is no one there. Oh, man. What's, what's in the, the box? box? <laughs> and that's where we'll call our adventure this evening. Woo! We're rich wow. as balls. Good work, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And what's we got in our the prisoner. box? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you everyone for watching. This has been another adventure in the Tales from Tetheria saga. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Mari as Kaizen Voldra, Noah as Deborah Mustard, and of course, our dungeon master, Ruben Bressler. Thank you all. Uh, this was a blast. This was a lot of fun. And when we get Joven back, he can be revived and we can beat him to a pulp and make him be there and play that character. Uh, Please check out uh, all of the, there'll be links to everyone's stuff in the description. Please check them out. All very talented people. Thank you so much. And I'll see you next time. Oh, my bows. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that adventure. If you want to see more D&D, click right over here. If you want to see what YouTube thinks is best for you, go ahead and click right over here. And don't forget to subscribe and also like and comment. Okay, see ya.